Good evening. In this short presentation, we will be looking into the HSBC scandal of 2004 to 2010. Over the period of 2004 to 2010, HSBC was involved in numerous cases of illegal and ethically questionable transactions. These were carried out without being recognised and therefore stopped by any of the preventative measures put in place to counteract such activity. These transactions were multi-billion dollar movements from high-risk sources. These failures were eventually discovered and led to an investigation by the US Senate. The disclosure was made when HSBC's Chief Executive Stuart Gulliver sent out an internal memo. This memo detailed how senior officials admitted their failure to properly implement money laundering controls. Gulliver stated, it is right that we be held accountable for and take responsibility for fixing what went wrong. This is something which should have been identified from the outset. UIB News have recently found out that money laundering scandal has been linked to terrorism and drug dealings. This illustrates exactly how serious the matter is and how senior officials at HSBC should be ashamed. The main reason that is behind HSBC not supporting the money laundering is maybe due to the weakness within HSBC's internal control and the governance policies. Management failed to report suspicious activity reports, and it's speculated that at one time there was a backlog of 17,000 and revealed six. The bank also failed to flag transactions with high-risk clients, such as Mexico and Iran, and allowed for a large amount of cash to be transferred between these accounts. And the U.S., without conducting the relevant checks as were mandated by U.S. law. In addition, some of the HSBC's anti-money laundering employees and those management positions were not aware of U.S. anti-money laundering policies. This problem only began to give an insight into a bank's attitude towards adhering to procedures and laws as well as management approach towards handling suspicious activity. News on the HSB scandal shocked the world. Whilst initial reaction to the record-breaking bank fine was one of confusion, once the Senate po report was released, opinion by specialists switched to whether they had gone far enough. The bank was in effect put in probation and were not criminally prosecuted, which would have stopped the bank from working in the US. The report written by the US Senate was extremely critical of HSBC's money laundering controls and the penalty also included a five-year agreement with the US Department of Justice under which the bank will install an in independent monitor to access the reformed internal controls. The bank has since spent 290 million US dollars on improving its systems and its top executives were forced to defer part of their bonuses with some of them being made to pay back previous bonuses also. Many argue that the punishment did not go far enough to deter the other banks from repeating HSBC's mistakes and that more should have been done to ensure that the UK-based bank were punished thoroughly. Even though HSBC were very heavily fined, we believe it would take an even larger fine for an incident of this magnitude to not occur again. This would fully dissuade HSBC or any other companies of thinking that they will be able to money launder without serious repercussions. The Corporate Governance Code is also key to consider, where the focus must not solely be on clarity of roles and accountability, but also on employees' and managers' behaviour in relation to these set rules. Other remedies that we suggest include supervision of peers to remove the risk of fabricated records, segregation of duties so that one no person has too much power or control, as well as transaction authorization and independent verification.